Microsoft Excel is not a programming language. It has no concept of variables, objects, or iteration. Therefore, one would think that it might not be possible to implement an algorithm in Excel because an algorithm is not a mathematical expression, but a process, typically involving an indefinite number of steps. But even if Excel's matrix of values don't change after they are calculated, Excel seems to be dynamic in a different way. Excel's concept of relative cell references makes it possible to represent iteration over rows or columns rather than over time. Taking advantage of this, I've come up with implementations of many real-world computer algorithms that can be implemented in Excel using only basic functions. Let's start with the shortest path algorithm that can find the most efficient way from point A to point B, given a set of vertices and weighted edges. This algorithm is called Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm only needs a table in which vertices are listed along the top and side, and the values in the middle show the weight of the edge between each pair of vertices. If no edge exists between two vertices, then we can enter a very high value that won't interfere with the algorithm. Beginning with a row that represents the length from any vertex to our destination, which we'll say is vertex 0, each iteration of Dijkstra's algorithm determines the best possible path to vertex 0 from exactly one other vertex, and then the next iteration will see if any other vertex can benefit by going to vertex 0 by way of the last one in its shortest path. So I wrote this formula to find the vertex in each row with the shortest known path to 0. It doesn't return the length of the shortest path, but looks up the vertex with that length in the row to return the number of the vertex itself. Then I wrote this formula that fills in each subsequent row. It looks like a lot, but I'll break it down. The two if statements just check to see if the cells in the column corresponds to the vertex which it was previously identified as having the shortest path. If it does, then it will fill in the cell with a blank because the vertex's shortest path has already been found. Otherwise, it should fill in the cell with the smaller of two values, the shortest path yet known from the current vertex, represented by the cell directly above, or an alternative route by way of the last completed vertex, which is just the sum of the direct edge weight between this vertex and that one, and the shortest path from that vertex, which has already been identified. Finding the direct edge weight between the vertex in question and the last completed one requires referencing the table, but using Excel's address function, we can use the same column as the current cell and the row that corresponds to the other vertex in our table. That address will give us the edge between them. With those two formulas written, all that remains is to stretch the latter formula across to generate the first iteration, and then everything down to generate the rest. Now the last value in each column shows us the shortest path from the vertex that the column represents to vertex 0, and using the column to the side, we can trace the path that it chose. Now I can truthfully say that I have just implemented Dijkstra's algorithm in Microsoft Excel. Thank you for watching, and drop kick that subscribe button to see more programming in Excel.